love Vancouver. <laughs> Every one of us, we must become protesters by force. It is either you are protesting because somebody something happened to somebody else and you feel empathy and you protest on the person's behalf, or you will protest on your own behalf because something has happened to you or your loved one or to your business. Now we are having the rich are also crying, now the rich are also talking, the rich are also making demands, the rich are also now advocate, the rich are also now crying, now they are also uh, protesting. Now go to refineries brought out a statement and they said on petroleum industry industry act pia we stand and this is a statement that they that they put out he said we are in receipt of nuprc statement that they have facilitated the allocation of 29 million barrels of crude oil to the dangote petroleum refinery and petrochemicals we would like to thank them for this allocation but at the same time let them know that we are yet to receive these cargoes. So this is the thing that I really don't understand about, you know, uh, Nigerian government, especially the illegitimate government uh, by Ebola and Metinibu. And this has been happening, you know, uh, for years. It's why do they take this time out to lie, lie on issues? Why are you lying on issues? Follow something true before you make a statement. In short, as I am saying this thing, as I'm speaking this thing, in my head, I can tell you, I've done a video exactly where I use these same words. And maybe like in 2018 or 20 something, because I'm seeking it, I'm remembering, I've done something like this before. I don't understand why there's a need for Nigerian, you know, the government, whether they're agencies or whatever it is, to come out and be putting out statements that are not factual. If you want to do a statement, wait when you put out, when you've done an action, wait to see that the person has received that action. Because even in terms of communication, they say communication is not when you put out a message or what you want to say. It's the way the person understood it. So even if you're doing something, you've put out, you know, a, a, a cargo has been done. You've, you've delivered, you've sent that, you've supplied them go take a, 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 a cargo of this thing. Until them go take accept, uh, assist the, this cargo, is able to receive the cargo, acknowledge receipt of cargo. Why are you coming out to say you've sent it to him? Because he hasn't seen it. And they do this thing deliberately all the time. They sort of like set people up. And sometimes they just do crazy things. You just come out to say that, oh, you've sent this, you've sent this uh, cargo to the person. Meanwhile, the person hasn't received cargo. And, some, and most times, the cargo did not even leave their district. They just put out a statement. Because at the end of the day, nobody is going to be punished for such a statement uh, being out in the public domain. In countries where because of a statement like this, the person that is in charge of that will be forced to resign. They will take their time. They won't come out and put out uh, such statements and just say anything, you know, anyhow. But anyway, going back to this uh, press statement that was born, uh, that was put out by Dongote, uh, uh, he said, uh, it continues, he said, we would like to thank uh, them for this allocation, but at the same time, let them know that we are yet to receive these cargoes. Aside from the term supply, we bilaterally negotiated with NMPC. Uh, so far, NUPRC has only facilitated the purchase of one crude cargo from a domestic producer. The rest of the cargoes we have purchased were purchased from international traders. All we are asking for is for refineries in Nigeria to buy crude or uh, directly from the companies that produce it in Nigeria rather than from international middlemen. This is specified in the PIA. Just imagine what all this whole thing is. Doing business in Nigeria? <laughs> for the first time, Angote is feeling what the rest of us business people have been feeling in this country. When you try to do business in Nigeria, they will frustrate you. It's a Nigerian institution. It's the Nigerian government. It's the Nigerian everything that will frustrate that your business, that you, you get to a place where you give up and move on. Because... Tell me how does this make sense? Angote wants to buy a crude oil, which is not just Angote, any other refinery that is in Nigeria. They want to, instead of them buying directly from companies that are carrying this crude oil from Nigeria, we should make it cheaper for them because you are expecting them to go and, <coughs> excuse me, please. You're expecting them to go and negotiate with middlemen, international middlemen, who at the end of the day, they are not even going to carry this oil. It's not as if they, they carry this oil, they brought you. Their own is just to, the, like what they call distributor, their own is just to sit down and say, okay, we you bought it through us and they will add their own money. And then when, when they are not refining this uh, crude oil, selling it to Nigeria, it will not be at, a, at an exorbitant price. <sighs> Nigeria. Hey, Nigeria. Anyway, let me go back to the statement. 
Unfortunately, the statement continues. The NUPRC has effectively admitted in their statement that they will be unable to enforce the domestic uh, crude supply obligation as specified in the PIA, citing sanctity of contracts as an excuse. And this was signed by Anthony Chair Gina, Group Chief, Branding and Communications Officer. And this statement was on the 9th of August, 2024. You know, these statements like this should make one weep. Beyond the sentiments of who Ngote is and how he has run his business and, you know, and whatever one might feel about him. It's about how, how corrupt the system is. It's about how there is no rule of law. It's about how you have strong men and women instead of strong institutions. It's about how, you know, the Nigerian government doesn't care whoever it is. It can deliberately kill a business just to serve, the, just to serve uh, a few, the personal gain of a few using the power that has been invested uh, in them by the Nigerian state. And we, this is something that we really cannot continue to go on, 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 this, on this level. This is not the way uh, things are supposed to be. This is why we are where we are in this nation, why things haven't worked. You have a few who are enriching themselves and all they think about is their enrichment and they don't care about what happens to Nigeria or Nigerians or, or, or anything. All they care about is whatever money, whatever gain that they are going to make. And this is how we've continued with our country for a very long time. And that's the reason why our country isn't, isn't working. You can't expect things to thrive in a system like this where some people, you know, we just stand as short chain businesses. You're talking already about high cost of uh, interest. You're talking about uh, lack of enabling environment for businesses to thrive. You're talking about extra expenses, extra overhead that you shouldn't have been making if things were working in Nigeria. You make all of these expenses and everything. You're going to try to do business and you're frustrated left, right, uh, and center. They expect them to go and use middlemen. Middlemen are going to add more money to this whole thing and make it very expensive. And at the end of the day, to not mean that Ngote would not be able to, you know, effectively compete, which is another thing that he does a lot of anyways. Now he's at the receiving end and I hope he sees how uh, destructive uh, this can be. And also he stops some of the things that he has been alleged to be doing in terms of undercutting, in terms of predatory pricing, in terms of not allowing, you know, competition, you know, to try. And so here we are in Nigeria, you know, facing all of these things. And it's, it's just so sad, you know, when, when you, especially more when you realize that it's actually Nigerian citizens that are setting up Nigeria. Nigeria uh, uh, in, in this manner and, and how many of them don't understand that as long as one person is affected, we all are affected. Uh, there's no one person that thinks that, oh, they, they are safe from whatever it is in Nigeria. Even those who have uh, second passports, I mean, you're not really that safe. And Nigeria has capacity to deal with where anyone and it doesn't care. It's turn by turn Nigeria uh, limited. Yesterday's victims were one survivors. Today's victims were yesterday's survivors. And tomorrow's victims will be today's survivors. The question is, who is next? Don't wait until something happens to you, just like what Uncle Tay is doing before you speak out. Speak out when it, haps, uh, when it is happening to others. By speaking out, you're making it more possible for it not to happen to you. Because if it, the problem is solved, if it, the solution is found to read, it will not get to happen to you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.